Welcome back. We're here with Jezebel the Basset Hound. Now one of the first things you notice about this breed is the floppy skin under their chin. That's called the dewlap. The other thing is a white tip on their tail, just like a beagle, so they can be easily seen when tracking a scent. And the other most noticeable thing are these massive ears. They hang right down on the ground and they can actually touch the ground. Because of that you do need to clean them fairly regularly or they can have problems with their health. Well the animal in our next story has a few problems with its health. It's a turtle with a growing bump. Our vet Jeff checks them out. Hi, and welcome to House Calls. Today we're here to meet Andy and her three turtles, so let's go and see them. Let's put these guys out on the lawn, give them a bit of sun, a change of scenery. Regular amounts of sunshine are good for Andy's three red-eared terrapins, Dude, Terry and Stu. Allowing their shells to dry out occasionally is good for their health, as they mostly live in tanks. I'm really impressed with your tanks, Andy. They, they seem to have lots of space, they're really interesting. They've got these lovely little basking areas where they can come up and sit under these lights. Um, this way it gives them a large area to get up on, walk around, stretch their legs, dry out. And they do need, um, they do need plenty of light, don't they, so that they can make enough vitamin D to uh, ensure that their shells develop properly. That's an important part of, uh, of uh, looking after turtles as well. You've got three turtles. Now, which turtle are we seeing today and what's his problem? Well, poor little Stu has developed a lump on his head, which I'm quite concerned about. Uh, it's been there for about three and a half weeks now and it's not getting any smaller, so I'd like to get it checked out because I think it could be his ear. And let's go and have a look at Stu. Hey Stu. Stu, where are you? Okay, so we're going to have to see if we can get Stu out of his tank. So I'm just picking him up by a shell. Up he comes, he's quite happy, doesn't seem to mind me, hasn't tried to bite me yet. Looking at his shell, you can see it is a little bit scalier. It's not quite as shiny and smooth as Dude, I notice, so um, maybe uh, he just isn't thriving quite to the same extent, but overall I think his shell is still in good shape. It's quite firm and hard, and uh, I think if, if we keep on uh, giving him plenty of light uh, and he has a good diet, I'm sure he'll continue to grow well. So I don't think that's a major problem, but this lump certainly... You can see that lump now? You can, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. Now, the problem is, we're going to try to look at this lump on his head, and it's always difficult to grab a turtle's head. And the technique that I'm going to try today, and I've never done this before, is uh, I'm going to try and use a little loop of, um, of bandage, and we're going to try and sort of maybe lasso him behind his head, and then that'll just give me enough control to be able to grab his head without hurting him. That's good, that's good. Now I've got his head. Oh, Ooh, just missed. Uh, not quite tight enough, so I'm just going to have to try that again, but I, I think this technique's got merit. Good boy, Stu. There's the one. Okay. You ought to go to the rodeo with lassoing a turtle. <laughs> now, I want to really have a good look at this lump. And I can feel that this lump is quite firm, but it's not hard, so it's sort of soft but firm. You might be able to just see my finger just making some little indentations there. Uh, his eyes look good. I can see the roof of his mouth looks good. His beak structure looks normal and his jaw appears to be working fine. I think I might try and put a little needle in here and just see if we can find out what material is in here because this could be, I guess, it could be a tumour, it could be a growth of some kind or it could be a little localised zone of infection. So now I'm going to get this little syringe and needle and I'm just going to draw up a sample of cells from under Stu's skin and take that back to the lab. Just doesn't, gone under the skin. Doesn't mind at all. No. Okay, so now I've taken this little sample. I want to get his bandage off from around his neck. Let his head go. Watch your fingers. Yep. Perfect. Well, wasn't that good? We've got that sample from the lump on Stu's head. With a bit of luck, We'll get some results back from the sample. I think we should definitely take him into the clinic, take some radiographs of his head, and uh, confirm that there's no bony involvement. And with a little bit of luck, we might uh, be able to sort out his problem for you. Yeah, no, that would be great. I mean, he's, he's got another 45 years to go on his life, so we could sort this problem out early. That would be great. Yeah, that's fantastic. Such a beautiful boy, aren't you, Stu? Hey, I think you like me. Ooh. 
or maybe you don't. And great news, Stu had the lump lanced and it was benign. Speaking of staying fit and healthy, Basset Hounds do need regular exercise, but as you can see, it doesn't have to be too strenuous. A good walk on the lead or a play in the backyard will suffice. One thing they're not so keen on though is swimming. A combination of being quite heavy and small little legs means they're not so good in the water. No, not at all. When it comes to owning a pet, there is a lot to know, but the SPCA does have some great advice. The SPCA works to support animal welfare as well as rescuing and rehoming pets. Like Moxie, who was rescued by an SPCA ambulance after Guy Fawkes night with a burn to his forehead. Moxie's new owner always makes sure he's wearing sunscreen when outside. When you take on a pet or an animal, you need to make their health and well-being a top priority. Make sure they see the vet regularly for checkups. Also, animals just like people need quality food to keep them healthy. Also remember, pets can get sick and need to have their vaccinations kept up to date. For more information, go to the website. There you can find out how to contact your local SPCA. After the break, one of these two has a brain the size of a walnut. Jeremy meets a cuddly Australian favourite, 